I have titled uh, this message as labor for that which is eternal. So laboring for that which is eternal. All right. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 46, talks about uh, that the, the first thing that happens is in the natural. The spiritual goes after following the physical. Okay. So the natural happens first and then the spiritual. Okay. So going by that, I want to first talk about what is work in the natural. Okay. What is work? Now we find work in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, when God created Adam. Okay. He, this is what he told him. Genesis 2 and verse 15. It says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Okay, so the Lord took man, placed him in the garden and told him to work in it. Okay, and to take care of it. So we know that in the, in the perfect situation that God created man in, in that perfect situation, God immediately gave man an assignment and a work to carry out. So work is a gift from God and also a command from God. So the very assignment from God for all of humanity is to go to work. Okay, so praise be to God. Hallelujah. So all those who go to work, hallelujah, say to yourself that, hey, I am in the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So praise be to God. Rejoice in the work that you have. All right. Now, what is the attitude that God wants you to have uh, as far as your work is concerned? So let's open to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 and 5 to, uh, 5 to 7. Okay, this is the attitude that you need to carry to your work. Okay, it says, Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Hallelujah. So the attitude to work is that you are not working for your boss or for your establishment or for your company, but you are doing as though you are doing it unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So now, you know, we know that we are not born uh, servants or slaves, but in today's terminology, uh, there are employees. Okay, so I'm addressing all those who are employees. Okay, and I know some of you are employers and you have businesses. Okay, but at the end of the day, you are also workers. Hallelujah. And what are you to do? You are working as though you are working for Christ. Let's read that passage all over again. Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. So number one, you got to be obedient to your bosses. Now, however uh, that you may feel in your spirit, some of you may feel, oh, what is, what is that? Uh, I, I don't really like my boss. But here, look at this. Whether you like your boss or not, it says be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ. So you're working as though you are working for Christ. Not with eye service, okay, as men pleasers, but as born servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from the heart. Okay, so you're not doing just when your boss looks at you. Okay, um, there are carpenters. Uh, you call them to work. Okay, and... Uh, uh, when you are not around, there's not much happening. But when suddenly you show up, there is a lot of activity they show. A lot of sound, tack, tack, and all that, all that happens. Okay, so uh, 
this word is saying that you're not to be working just when your boss seems to appear on the stage okay but you are to work as though the lord is looking at you round the clock okay so if you're working uh, some of you are uh, at your home okay some of you are housewives uh, you know homemakers you are working you work as though you work unto the lord okay so don't don't feel that if this is an obligation that you got to work for your family but work so that you are under the lord hallelujah you are serving as though you are serving the the living god hallelujah so work from your heart with good will doing service as to the lord not to men so when you are when you are cooking when you are laboring at your house okay you are not doing it your for your spouse or for your children hallelujah uh some of you husbands are uh, uh you know started uh, sweeping and swabbing the floor some of you are uh, cleaning out dishes praise be to god some of the wives are delighted hallelujah that the husbands are joining in the work okay and some of you are helping in cooking okay and cleaning okay and household chores okay so the wives are delighted uh, these days that there is somebody to help out okay so but all of you function as though you're functioning to the lord not to one another because if you look to one another you will be frustrated okay but you do it as unto the lord now where is your reward coming from in verse 8 it says your reward comes from heaven knowing that whatever good anyone does he will receive the same from the lord whether he is a slave or free whether you're freely doing it or whether you are obligated to do it okay some of you husbands are now sitting at home because you, you don't have a job okay you are you are sitting at home uh, because you don't have to go to work okay and there is work at home and you are out of your free will okay not under compulsion but you are helping out at home okay but even when you are doing it with your free will you are doing it as though you do it to the lord hallelujah so your reward is from the lord who looks at you and you ought to work for him and no one else hallelujah so what is god's standard of working okay let's look at uh, 1 peter chapter 2 where does god give credit how is god's point system okay credit rating or assessment okay uh, or Uh, performance review uh, however you may put it in the modern terminology okay let's look at god's standards it's in 1 peter chapter 2 verse 18 to 21 let's read that open your bibles and look at that first peter chapter 2 verse 18 onwards let me read this it says slaves or employees okay and workers in reverent fear of god submit yourselves to your masters not only to those who are good and considerate but also to those who are harsh aha uh-huh. look at this you ought to work for your masters or your bosses or your managers okay as though you are submitting to god not because they are good guys look at this even if they are good and considerate but also if they are harsh people who are going against you and doing things which you hate they are oppressing you and they are sidelining you in your team you are the one who is being segregated and you are being reviled you have been put aside you have been made to do all the dirty work you have been work made to work uh, uh, all the bad things okay and the rewards are to the to the rest of the people and not to you and you have been sidelined by the boss okay and uh, he is not being good to you he or she uh, is not being good to you the lord the word of god says even in those circumstances you ought to function as though 
you were serving the Lord. Hallelujah. In reverent fear of God, submit to those managers who are not good to you. In verse 19 it says, For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. Hallelujah. So where do you get commended? You are commended by God if you do very, very well in your job and for your commendable work. Okay, your exceptional work. You have been unjustly put through suffering by your manager. Even though you do all the good works, you are being put under. You are being subjected down under. You have been harshly treated. Uh, you have been sidelined. All the good things go to your other, other colleagues, but not to you. Even in these, God says, this is exactly the time when God commends you. That you do, you do not return tit for tat, but you do commendable service. You do service unto the Lord, even though there is injustice happening to you. Verse number 20, it says, but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? So if you do a wrong, you get a beating for it and you endure it. There is really no credit in the eyes of God. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it with gladness and rejoicing before God, you endure through the suffering because you know that you are doing it to the Lord and not to that manager. Then it is commendable to God. God really commends you. To this you were called, verse number 21. So the Christian life is a calling and that call is this you were called to, that you suffer for doing good and you get unjustly punished for doing well and you endure through it. So you are called Christians. Hallelujah. Not when everything is happy and, and your paychecks are doubling, okay, and you are really, uh, you know, your bonuses are coming lovely. Your incentives are coming lovely. Your boss is celebrating you marvelously. And you are exceptional. You are darling in the eyes of the management. And everything is going nice. That is the time you are doing well. That's the time when God doesn't really give you credit points so much. Okay. The credit happens to your account when you suffer injustice even when you do good to your company, even when you serve exceptionally, hallelujah, as though you'd serve the Lord, hallelujah. So that, it says, to this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So we are called to follow in the steps of Christ, suffer for all injustice that is happening to you and endure and endure through that cross. Hallelujah. Look at this. So this is now. Today, if you're hearing this message, even though you may feel it is a hard word, but I'm telling you by the word of God. Hallelujah. He who endures to the end will receive a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. There is great blessing because the Lord attests to you. Hallelujah. Look at the life of Joseph. He endured suffering and he kept up a, a, an excellent spirit. And his working was excellent. Even in the midst of suffering, he was rejected by his own brothers. He was put into a pit. And there then he was sold to a, a, a slave traders. 
and from there to the Potiphar's house. And there also he functioned well. And uh, even after the Potiphar's wife unjustly uh, came after him, okay, even there in the prison, he worked well. Hallelujah. Everywhere he did well, even though all wrong things were happening to him. And Lord looked at him and he said, this is the man I would like to commend. And this is the man I would like to raise up. Hallelujah. And so God raised up Joseph. Hallelujah. And made him the prime minister of Egypt, the number two man. Hallelujah. And God filled him with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. And made him. And he was a diligent man. He worked hard. Hallelujah. And he labored hard. He was not a slothful man. He worked with wisdom and with his hands. And he made Egypt prosper and he made Pharaoh prosper. Hallelujah. And he was a blessing to his father and to his brethren in his household. Hallelujah. Because he had an excellent spirit and he carried a work ethic that he endured even in the midst of suffering. Hallelujah. Now, let me uh, turn over an, another aspect of being blessed when you are uh, when you are working okay and i want you to open to proverbs chapter 12 verse 14 see we are called to keep the confession of our mouth correct according to the word of god in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says do not let the book of the lord depart out of your mouth because this will cause you to become successful you will make your way successful because of your mouth you will meditate on the word of God and with your mouth, you will bring declarations of the word and you will make your way successful. But with the mouth, okay, God told the nation of Israel under Joshua to work also, to go and fight, to go and plant, hallelujah, to go and labor. He did not tell them to sit and just confess and lie down on the bed and receive every blessing. No. He had to go and work, and in the working, the Lord laid his hands upon the work of their hands and blessed the work of their labor. Hallelujah. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. There is a balance between confessing the word and working. So we need to hit that right balance. Hallelujah. It says, a man will be satisfied. Proverbs 12, verse 14. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand will be rendered to him. So you will be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth. What do you confess? But you also are called to work with your hands. God will recompense a man's hands. The labor of his hands will be recompensed and will be rendered to him. Hallelujah. So you need both confessing as well as working. All right. So I believe it's so important in these days, okay, to work. And we need to also teach our children to work. Hallelujah. Because it is very, very important that our children be not just thumb workers. Okay. I, I, I hope you, you understand what I'm saying. Because nowadays, the, children, uh, the generation Z is only working with their thumb. Okay, everything. Okay, but let them also work with their hands, not just with their thumbs. Okay, so as parents discipline your children, Proverbs 22 verse 15, it says, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Hallelujah. So disciplining is important. Correction is important. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Sometimes as a babe in Christ, we are also some, sometimes in discipline. We are called to be disciplined. Hallelujah. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. Okay, look at the Psalms 23. It says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. So the rod of God may it comfort you. Hallelujah. So. It brings correction. The word of God brings correction and reproof 
so that you are edified, built up for every good work in Christ Jesus. All right. Now, as we speak the word of God, we are also told that our mouths are dangerous things. Okay, in the book of James. And we know that our, our tongue is something we, which we need to control. Okay, we look at Proverbs 14 verse 23. Watch your mouth. In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. So if you labor with your hands, there is profit. But if you continuously are chattering away with your mouth, and all, all the day that you're chattering with your mouth, be careful you don't land up in poverty. So watch your mouth. Your mouth needs to produce the word of God, not idle chatter. Hallelujah. So this is, uh, I'm bringing this in the natural so that you can understand the spiritual. Okay, just as I, uh, as I said in the beginning, okay, we will look at the natural. 1 Corinthians 15, 46 says, first the natural and then the spiritual. So I spoke about working in the natural, the work in the natural. Now, let's look at the spiritual. What do we need to do in the spiritual? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. We are called to good works. Hallelujah. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So we need to be diligent, not lazy. We need to be out working the salvation that has come to us. Hallelujah. We have been saved. God is the workman who has created us in Christ Jesus for good works. Hallelujah. You and I are born again for good works. Not to sit on our blessed assurance, but to go out and display the glory of God. To do the good works which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So there is a work for each one of you prepared by God. You need to download that and start functioning in it in Jesus' name. Okay, Matthew 4 4 says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is declaring. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So our lives in the spiritual needs to come from the word. But the word also, you need to gather the word. There is a work to gather the word. Look at this. John chapter 6 verse 27. John 6 verse 27. It says, do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Hallelujah. So, our job is not just to go after our daily work in the natural. It says, do not labor for the food which perishes. God is saying, Jesus is coming and telling us that we need to work for the food which endures to everlasting life. Hallelujah. So there is a laboring to get the food which endures to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Now, that means if you do nothing in the kingdom of God, you will be unprofitable in the kingdom because you are now not diligent to search the scripture, study the scripture, meditate on the scripture and bring out the word of God and outwork it with your hands. Hallelujah. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You are not just willing, but you need to be obedient. He who obeys me, says the Lord, not the person who says, okay, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but he who obeys my word. 
So there is an aspect of obedience, going out and working out the obedience of the word of God. Okay, so there is a labor in finding the word of God. Hallelujah. So how much? Today I want to challenge you and ask you a question. How much time do you spend laboring for the eternal word of God? Hallelujah. Do you spend time laboring? Do you spend time laboring with your family to search the word of God for your family? Do you spend time laboring for your business, for your, for your, uh, for your job, the word of God that is needed for you to succeed in the place of your employment, in the place of your business, in the place uh, where you are called to function? Hallelujah. In your ministry, are you receiving the word? Are you searching out scriptures? Are you working the works? Hallelujah. Search your heart and get to work. Hallelujah. Look at what the word of God is. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. What is the word of God? The word of God is sweet. It's a scroll, but there is a, the, the, the prophet is told to eat the word. That is labor. Okay, in the book of Proverbs it says, there is a lazy man who actually, the food is in front of him. He is so lazy that he cannot even bring the food from the bowl and put it into his mouth and chew it because he's so lazy, he's so sluggard. And the proverb says, look to the ant, you sluggard. Learn from the land. So also in the spiritual, you need to go take the word and eat the scroll, the book of the word of God, for it is written. It is not in traditions of man. The word of God is not in tradition. Let me just declare that to, to you. Hallelujah. And to some of you. There is nothing good in the traditions of man. And the word of God is not in tradition. But in the word of God. Hallelujah. So look to the word. Renounce the traditions for the word of God. Hallelujah. And look to him. Ezekiel 3 verse 1, 2 and 3. It says, moreover he said to me. Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll. So there is an activity that the prophet has to do is to eat the scroll of the word of God. And then he has to go and speak to the house of Israel. That is was his ministry. You cannot do ministry without eating the word of God. Some people get into the ministry without eating the word of God. And then they dry up. And then they blow up. Hallelujah. You need to get into the ministry only when it is infilled and getting overflown. Hallelujah. So moreover he said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat the scroll. Go speak to the house of Israel. So Ezekiel opened his mouth and he, and the Lord caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate it and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Hallelujah. For some of you, it may not look so good, but as you start to eat it, when you start to look at it, it may look a troublesome job. It may look tiresome. But when you start to eat it, it will become honey. Hallelujah. So I ate it and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Hallelujah. May the Lord start to become sweet in your life. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sweet. Sweetness is from the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, I am sweet. My word is sweet. Meditate on it and eat of it. Hallelujah. Look at this. Now, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Can you open to that scripture? Luke chapter 9, verse number 23. And I want to share something very important. It says, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, 
let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus is telling and saying to them all, if anyone, anyone, any person desires to come after Jesus, let that person deny himself or herself. Crucify the flesh. Take up his or her cross daily and follow him. So, remember uh, that uh, the flesh is in enmity to God. But we are called to walk in the spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Because in the spirit, there is liberty. There is freedom. Now, open to Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. It says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. This is Jesus telling about the kingdom of God and eternity in darkness, eternity in hell. Okay, the world walks in that broad way and leads to destruction. Enter by the narrow gate. So wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So there is a gate which is broad, which leads to destruction. And there is a narrow way which leads to life. Hallelujah. Narrow is the gate. And difficult is that gate which leads to life. Hallelujah. And there are few who find it. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus is telling. Okay. Now, let us understand. Okay. Jesus in another place said, okay, if for the rich man to enter, it's as difficult as the camel to go through an eye of a needle. Okay. Even the camel can go through the eye of the needle, but it is more difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Then, you know, uh, uh, the disciples told him, Okay, then it is very impossible. Then Jesus goes on to say, it, for man it is impossible, for, but for God it is possible. All things are possible. Hallelujah. So the camel goes through the eye of the needle is a, actually a gate in Jerusalem, which is a small gate where the main gate is closed. And in the night, a camel can crawl through and the camel has to be pushed through as it kneels down. Okay, as it kneels down, it will be Put through that narrow gate and the whole load of it the camels used to carry loads and all that load has to be unloaded out of the shoulders and the alone that camel has to on its knees go down bow down and it has to be pushed through it's so difficult procedure that the the the, the person who's riding the camel has to get down and push there has to be a pushing and the camel has to go through it's very very difficult okay but camel goes through only if it unloads the burden. So also with us, we are to unload the burden of the flesh and walk in the spirit. Now I want, to, I want you to look at this. You have, might have heard this a million times. Okay. To unload the things of the world and to crucify the flesh and walk with the Lord. But I want to show you something very beautiful. Look at it. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, for and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But all throughout Christianity, you will hear from people that Christian walk is a difficult walk. But Jesus tells you that Christian walk is an easy walk. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Hallelujah. So what is this? Let us understand it. Are you, are you ready to hear? Let, if you have ears to hear, may you hear. Look at Ezekiel. All of you, please open your Bibles. Ezekiel chapter 41, verse number 7. And this is the last thing that I want to 
last scripture that I want to dwell upon, okay, uh, for this day. If you understand this, there will be tremendous revelation that will hit you. Ezekiel 41, verse number 7. I pray some light will come. Some tube lights will start opening. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 41, verse 7. Are you there? I hope you're there. Let me read this. It says the side rooms all around the temple. This is talking about the millennial temple. Which is going to come in the future. Ezekiel is seeing the vision. God is giving detailed instruction. How to build that temple. All the detailed measurements and specifications are being given. And I want you to look at this one verse very, very specifically. Very carefully. It says, the side rooms, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says the side rooms all around the temple were wider at each successive level. Now, let me just put it because if you, only if you read uh, chapter 40, uh, chapters 40 and 41 and 42, you will understand the structure of the temple. Okay, but I cannot get into all of that. But let's look at verse 7. Understand this, that this temple that is being built, there is three stories, there's three structures, three, uh, three floors, three elevations. Okay, now, in that it says, the side rooms, side rooms all around the temple were wider at each successive level. So when the person comes in, he comes into a narrow room. As he goes higher, he gets into a broader room. He goes into a higher room, it gets even more bigger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. The structure surrounding the temple was built in ascending stages so that the rooms widened as one went upward. Hallelujah. I believe this will start making you jump up from your seats. A stairway went up from the lowest floor to the top floor through the middle floor. Hallelujah. So, a stairway is going from the top, from the bottom floor to the top floor. And what is it showing? That the beginning floors are compressed. It's a narrow place. As you go into the Lord, as you ascend into the Lord's presence, it becomes broader and broader and broader. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God wants to tell you, he wants you to enter through the narrow gate. But see, the walk is not through a narrow path. He is opening a highway of holiness. Hallelujah. Where even a fool will not err, says the word of God. Hallelujah. It is a broad road in his presence. But the road which leads to life is a narrow road. You have to humble yourself. Leave aside your flesh. Leave aside your worldly proclivities. And enter through that narrow gate. Hallelujah. And then as you walk daily. You walk in the spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. You are more and more coming into a wider and wider and wider and larger place. Hallelujah. Now you are delighted in the presence of God. There is a vastness in the Holy Spirit. There is a vastness in the kingdom of God. There is huge things that God wants to show you. According to Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he says, Call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that which you knew not. Hallelujah. As a baby Christians, you knew not. Hallelujah. You entered through the narrow gate. It was suffering. It was difficult. But you chose that narrow way. But the Lord says, you will now come into a broad place as you decide to grow in the Lord. That is why the scripture says, now become mature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you are now heirs of salvation. According to the word of God. You are heirs of salvation in Christ Jesus. 
a hare will only be fully hare when he becomes fully mature. When he's a child, he is still under the law, under uh, 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 servants, tutors who will take him. So there are very less privileges. You go through a narrow path, difficult times. Hallelujah. But as you mature in the Lord, it becomes a broader place. So then, as you grow, no longer, sin has no longer hold over you. Now, if you, if, if, when you mature in Christ, you keep a bottle of alcohol, it doesn't have a hold over you. Hallelujah. You have left it at the ground floor, out of the temple, outside. Hallelujah. You are not even considering it. You have so much great things ahead of you. This looks like trash, complete trash. Hallelujah. So all what your flesh used to dwell earlier in your past sinful nature, all your addictions, the addictions in, in various aspects, all sinful addictions, you used to visit bars and, and dance bars or you, you used to do all kinds of uh, illicit things. But God has now saved you as you leave aside all the fleshly things and become sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And you are washed in the blood of Jesus. And as you grow and mature in the word of God, you come into a broad territory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You go higher and higher. And then as you are faithful in working the works, see, working in the kingdom is important. You work to get this into your system and get it out of your mouths on a continuous basis. The more you speak the word, hallelujah, the blessing of God surrounds you. Hallelujah. Angels start to come and encounter you. Hallelujah. The blessing of heaven pours out. So now you start to walk in a heavenly atmosphere. Even though Paul and Silas were in a prison cell, in the dungeon, they started to rejoice because they are in an atmosphere of the kingdom. Not in a lowly level below in bondage. See, the broad way which leads to destruction is a broad gate. But as you enter it, it starts to become narrower, 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 and it starts to bind you. And now it has made you a slave. And now you are bound. You are frustrated. You are sick. You are poor. You are blind. You are wretched. You are a slave to your sinful addictions. And you are completely destroyed. Your family is destroyed because of those addictions. And you become a slave. But the Lord is telling you, come through the narrow gate. And then the Lord takes you into higher ground. Hallelujah. So this morning, as you hear the word of the Lord, choose to work the works of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. And as you go out from your, from your lockdown state, and as you go to work, may you be a blessing to your employer. And may you work as though you work for the living God. Hallelujah. So that the Lord will reward you. And you walk into higher territories of freedom in Christ Jesus. Even though you may be suppressed by your bosses, but in your heart, you will be making melody in your heart, rejoicing in Christ Jesus, because he is your rewarder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each oppression that comes upon you, and as you speak blessings to those people who oppress you, and who speak ill of you, and you, uh, and you are uh, being subject to, uh, to, uh, to being in the margins of the, of the, of the company, and you're marginalized. God commends your work. And God credits you with a blessing. Hallelujah. So come up to a higher ground in Christ Jesus. Where there is broadness in the spirit. 
where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So come, work in the kingdom. So that every work you do in the physical is a work as though you work for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Discipline yourself so that you are joyful in the end. Praise be to God. I pray that this will bring you uh, into a good land, a land of blessing. Hallelujah. Just as you are obedient to hear the word and implement the word. Hallelujah. You and your household will be blessed in Jesus' name.